Do we have any oh, questions goodness. for the gentleman? Yeah. Um, I Go signed on. Yeah, I, I, I saw that the third edition is coming out for AP. Uh, when is that release date projected? Do you want me to field that? Yeah, Dave, David Nathan. Danny, have... Yeah, yeah, if you could field that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is in January currently. It is uh, set for January 19th. Okay. And I, I think we are tracking really well for that. We've got some, um, some sample pages available, and I can send those out afterwards if you would like. Uh, okay. Access to, to look at the new edition. Yes. Uh, this is okay. I can confirm we're tracking really, really well for that because we've seen <laughs> the page proofs of virtually every one of the units now. So uh, All right. it's very exciting. It, 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 it has a few more stages to go, but it's close enough that it's going to make it without doubt. Okay. Now, um, uh, again, with the with reference to that, I, we have we've been using. Well, actually, I've been using your book since the sixth edition. But um, wow, with, thank you. what differences are we looking at uh, going into the the third edition from that? Are we just folding? Uh, Nathan, in on that like we were doing in the 10th edition with the DSM updates and the 11th edition that we're on now? Or are we actually looking at structural differences in the book? Are we moving big things around? Dave, uh, do you want... Yeah, well, Dave, let me just say a couple of things and then let uh, Nathan, Kate, and Janie uh, answer that further. First, the book is organized in units following the College Board guidelines for the AP course. Sure. Uh, second, it's massively updated. So there's 1,100 new citations that appear in this new third edition, uh, as well as being meticulously edit edited throughout. And there's also some new features like uh, visual infographics to teach various concepts, as well as some of the how would you know exercises that Nathan mentioned that are online. Right, right, right. OK, that's exciting. The I got a question. When AP, because I know you you know AP in and out, they seem to not give a, a, a crud about anything having to do with sexual development and things like that. And yet we have it in, I'm, well, I teach out of a couple different books of yours. I teach college class out of one, and then I'm using the modules, broken down into modules. And the modules does a great job at having those enrichment modules shoved all the way in the back. That they're like, look, this is great for gen psych. You should absolutely learn this stuff. But for testing purposes, don't really worry about this stuff popping up on the test. Why do we keep, like, is there any plans? Because it's important stuff to me, and I teach it anyway. But it, it stays in the bulk of the text rather than being put into the enrichment modules itself. Is there any reason that we're not shoving it back in there? Well, Brian, you're singing to the choir here. I mean, it's not just <laughs> right. the material you've mentioned, but say all of health psych, which I would think would be a really important topic for AP students to encounter as they think about their own lifestyles and health. Um, just hasn't made it onto the AP exam radar. And so honoring the College Board guidelines, we have that in the book because we think it's important but we have it as an enrichment unit at the back. But I would love for that to become part of a future uh, text, and likewise, the material on sexual development. Well, it's, no, well, your sexual orientation is actually in, that whole section on sexual orientation and such is actually in the bulk text, not in the enrichment modules. Right, that's right. And that's what I've, yeah, and that's what I've noticed, like, so I'll, you know, I come across it, and you better believe there's interest in that. But it doesn't seem to be from AP. Right. But that was my question. Like, you keep it in the, in the main section of the book, not in the enrichment modules. Yeah. Well, of course, to some extent, the AP exam is is developed, according to what I've been told, based on what the leading textbooks are presenting. So, right, right hopefully, on. Hopefully, we can have Thank some you. influence on the long run over the exam too. Thank you. You just a I've been asking and like wondering that question for years and. I was on, I don't know, a couple of years back on one of these webinars with you, and I didn't ask that question. I was like, dang it, I've always wanted to know the answer to that. But, yeah, and I try and explain to my kids, you know, look, they're pulling from, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 textbooks to create this exam. And 
this is, you just need to learn. This is the reason I'm using the Myers version and how we're going after it. So this is fantastic. Perfect, perfect answer right, I thank now. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for the privilege of assisting your teaching. I regard yeah, us yeah. as your teaching assistants. Yeah, well, <laughs> I appreciate all your hard work. So that way I don't have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I just teach what you guys go out and do, and it's fantastic. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Do we have any additional questions? Yeah. Can I can I be heard? Sure. You yes. This is, this is Brian as well. And uh, first of all, okay. um, thank you so much for taking your time for this, and especially the stuff on post truth, as I also teach AP seminar, and that's really what we hit on is that skill set of how to uncover truth. So both of those tied into both of the AP subjects I teach, I really appreciate that. So I use it also in my AP seminar class, as well as the AP psychology. So thank you, Dr. Myers, for doing that. Um, thank you. The second thing, uh, Nathan, you know, I, it was awesome hearing from you because I did the same thing with marathoning and Ironman. Getting into that and having my kids do extra credit on, you know, things like uh, what what neurotransmitters are at play and, and hormones that get us through events like that. And they come out and they support it. So it's been neat experience and shared with the uh, with the students. Um, oh, that's great. But my question my question for you all is, you know, is one of as a big advocate for your textbook, one of the reasons is the kids find it extremely easy to read. You know, it's very well done with the examples that you use. It makes sense to the kids. And why do you think other textbooks, especially in the AP realm, don't use a similar model? You know, some of the ones, our most popular AP subjects, the kids can't stand reading those textbooks. But I bring them into AP psychology, and they enjoy the textbook. So I work hard to make sure our county stays with your textbook because the kids, it's one of the only textbooks they've, they don't mind reading. They like reading it, so I appreciate that. But maybe I'll – is it a is it a personality that does that? Is it just our, our subject matter because it's so interesting to them? But why don't more subject matters go for that same model of using more examples? Well, all I can say is I love your question, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know, uh, Brian, I think, um, you know, I, I think part of it is – you know, this, the, the material really does speak to students because it, it talks about, you know, what was my favorite subject when I was a high school student, which was me and my friends and how I could understand myself better and my friends better and my parents, you know, like why are they doing this? Um, but w with regard to writing, you know, uh, Brian, I, you know, I came to study psychology. You know, psychology wasn't offered at my high school. So I, uh, I took it when I was a first semester in, in college. And it was, uh, we used the Myers textbook. And, uh, and that is why I became a psychology major. And I think it's a big reason why I wanted to become a writer is because Dave was just so good at it. And he, uh, and he really found a way to speak to me as I felt like he was speaking to me personally. And, uh, and it really takes that unique voice to have that impact. And, um, you know, one thing that I've tried to do, you know, in my life is to, uh, I think Dave and I are, are very similar, we're, you know, I think we're kindred spirits in many ways with our, with our absolute love for the written word and for the process of writing, and more broadly, the writing life and what it looks like, and how it's a it's a daily activity uh, that requires tremendous discipline, but also tremendous reward. Uh, and so, um, so I think that you know, I, I really do think that it's it's a mission for both of us that we attend to every single day of our lives. And I have, you know, I've many friends, uh, academic friends, who are also textbook authors. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure that they have the same relationship to their textbook offering that we have to ours. Um, and I think that that level is, is required. 
um, in some in some ways if if you if you really want to have the highest standard possible. So with, with that being too self congratulatory, let me just say echoing what Nathan said, we really do attend to the art of writing. And I've been mentored by a poet in my background. The other thing is um, I have the attitude that if, if, if I don't have fun writing, then nobody's going to have fun reading. So <laughs> I try to enjoy the material, and I know Nathan does too, and to communicate that pleasure, that savoring of, of the human experience that I mentioned earlier. Um, and to take joy in the process, and hopefully some of that comes through. So, but thank you, Brian. And, yeah, thank and by you the way, it was, it was Dennis. I should. I realized now it was Dennis that was speaking earlier. So I sorry I called you Brian, Dennis. No, no, no. I'm not Dennis. I'm Craig. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, then my screen's giving me the wrong names here. Yeah. yeah you can call us whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, okay. Hey, guys. Yeah. There. You, that'll do it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions? Uh, the uh, the new worth when when they came out with the second edition of the AP, they they did a lot of they did a lot of um, uh, the, a lot of the materials seemed to just be kind of transferred over from the old and certain things like even on the test bank pages weren't lining up and things like that. Are they correcting that going into the third edition? Do you know? Do you yeah. guys even handle that, or or is that yeah. the team? It is a it is a team. So uh, Dave and Nathan uh, work on the student edition, a part of okay. the book, and so so we have a team then that works on the supplements. And certainly, if you, so I'm going to post my um, I'm going to see if I can post my email address here because if you have specific examples, I would love to see them so we can make sure that we correct anything. Um, that that you found, but yes, we have we have a lot of eyes that look at it. So and it's amazing how things can still sneak by you. Right. But yes, okay. we 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 work on we we work hard on this. So right. so, so definitely. So the AP questions that are in the new edition, for example, are created by master teachers of high school psychology, and they're proofread by layers of people. Uh, between them and it gets yeah. you in the book. So this new edition, I know, is being done extremely carefully uh, with regard to scrutinizing that material. Good, because the, the, the format, what happened between the first edition, which was laid out in, like, say you take uh, Unit 3 and you break it down into A, B, and C, and that was just abandoned going into the second, the second edition with modules, and which is fine. I don't, I don't mind either way, but... Like when it went to the test bank and it was like, okay, give me the updated questions, please, and I need, you know, everything reflecting the DSM-5 changes and such. And that's just, it, it was so bad that I had to just abandon even using the test bank, which saves hours and hours of, of time, as you know. But, uh, it, it, yeah, that was a frustrating thing. And then when I did call them, when I called Worth and I said, hey, and they're like, oh, let me send you the updated version and I was like there, there's no it's the same you just sent me the same thing on a disk that's that's all you did it's not different and then well let me try emailing it to you well no it's the same thing again it's, it's just it wasn't formatted properly and broken down and so finally I was like okay I'll just do it myself but um yes yeah, so that's something that that worth the team at worth would definitely want to look into or maybe the person who was passing me the information just didn't have access to the actual newest test bank for the second edition. Huh. And maybe it really is out there. I just haven't found it. So but that's sort of the head. That, so uh, is it, this is Nathan speaking. Uh, is this Craig? Yeah. Yes. Hey, so Craig, if um, when you get the third edition, would, mm -hmm. would it be possible for you to take a look at that first thing? Uh, and if you have any problems with that, just send me an email. Send, send Dave and me, or, or you can just send me an email, and we'll that, we'll sure. get it correct. And we'll we'll get it corrected right away. Okay. That that'll be fantastic. I'll, yeah. yeah. Well, I've already put an order in for the third edition book, but as for getting the actual testing materials and, and the supplements, all that stuff, that normally comes a little bit behind. Um, yeah. But as soon as I do, yeah. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Right now, it's as simple as, and I don't know, maybe I'll try, you know, this week to, to call up to the sales folks at Worth, my contact folks, and 
and say, hey, could you please send me the latest, greatest testing, you know, test bank for the, the Myers second edition, and I'll see if there's anything there. Because as of right now, it's a format problem. Uh, but there were right. also, you guys made massive, you moved around chunks of information. And, you know, it's funny because I, because I've been working since the sixth edition, I know how these books are organized. You know, you mm -hmm. just, they, they become, you know, some of your favorite reads, and you're like, wait a second, what is this doing in this section now? Right, And so right. it's just been a formatting thing. Um, but, well, yeah, I'll gladly do that and, and shoot you guys off an email if, if they haven't figured out how to correct that. <laughs> No, I, I had a similar I had a similar issue with Test Bank when I was using you know our own book in, in a college mm -hmm. book, uh, and the Test Bank was changed from one title to the other, and I like lost an entire exam that I had written from one Test Bank that I couldn't print or some had weird some weird thing, so yeah so things things happen. Um, but you can always feel like you can contact me, okay? Like the, Okay, thank like, you. I appreciate that. Yeah, at any point, regarding this or really regarding anything, if you have any thoughts or questions or comments or your students, please tell them to, to email. We love getting emails from students. We just, we literally just before this call, Dave sent one that, that he received and I sent one from an adopter that I received, a contact, so. Great. That is yeah. wonderful to know that you guys well because I know you're incredibly busy but the fact that you keep yourself accessible like that is wonderful thank well, you we for do doing this that. for you we do this for you that's why we do this so we're I, more happy to I really really do yeah okay is that well, it, thank you Jim. I think that is I think that is it thank you so much for mm -hmm. a very wonderful webinar we appreciated it great and thank you all for joining us yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you for having us again we thank, thank you, you. All right. Have a great evening.